Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Pour your spirit upon us. Pour your spirit upon us. Saturate us with your presence. Saturate this place with your presence. Saturate this place with your presence. Saturate this place with your presence. Feel this place with your presence. Kadosh, Kadosh, Jehovah Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Shalom, 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 Yeshua, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Can you just welcome him to your heart? Welcome him. Welcome him to his temple. Welcome to your temple. Welcome to your resting place. Welcome to your throne. Make my heart your throne. Sit on it. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place. Hey, hey. You're welcome in this place. 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 You're welcome in. You're welcome in this place.
Alléluia. 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 Please be seated. God bless you. If you do the due diligence of studying scriptures, of exposing yourself to the ways and the patterns of God, you will begin to draw out certain patterns that are consistent with God's character. You will see that at various situations, various times, a people would find themselves in conditions that are unpalatable, in conditions that portray captivity. They will find themselves in all kinds of hostile situations. And when they begin to call upon the Lord in affliction, no matter what era, no matter what particular age, the intervention of God is consistent. That there is a way God intervenes. Every time a people are maligned, every time destinies are held under captivity and people cannot break into their God-ordained positions and installations of captivity had been placed to resist them from rising to their full potential. When men cry, God answers by sending a deliverer. Consistent from the days of old, the Philistines put a siege on Israel and they began to, 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 to push them out of the basic necessities that they need. They began to manipulate scales. They began to make sure Israel could not find free course in their operations. When Israel cried to God, he sent them a deliverer called Samson. That in the days of the Philistines, that God had different ways he intervened. The Philistines went to war with Israel and a mighty warrior from the camp of the Philistine emerged. When he came and he spake, fear entered the camp of the Israelites. Everybody began to shiver. Here's what God did again. He sent a deliverer. It will always be a man for Goliath to be a David. But today I want to, I want to center around the life of Samson. And the discourse tonight is how at the mighty fallen. How at the mighty fallen. A child was received by prophecy. A child was received by angelic declaration. After the same order that people like John the Baptist, people like Jesus enter time, that an angel appeared and say your wife will be with child and when she is with child you will, you, will, you will keep this consecration that no blade will come upon his hair she will not take any strong drink throughout the days of her conception and throughout the whole gestation period until she put to bed that no strong drink will enter her mouth. So from the birth of this child, there are already consecrations to be kept. There are consecrations if Israel will receive a deliverer, the people who will bring that deliverer into time. There are consecrations they must keep. And so when the prophecy came to Manoah, he says, although it looks like the case on ground looks hopeless, he says, a child will come. And when the child comes, these are the consecrations we must keep. I want to, as quick as possible, I want to show us certain things that are consistent with the life of deliverers. Because it's not enough that you arrive. It's not enough that you manifest. <laughs> you can manifest and you can begin to make one or two area of impact, but it is not enough.
Let's pray for one minute, wherever we are. Let's pray for one minute. Hallelujah. It wasn't just enough that the child has been born. Because every single consecration it takes to help him enter time was met accurately. The mother did not submit herself to drinks. She didn't defy that consecration. And so a child that has been born after a superior order. The Bible made us to understand that the spirit of the Lord will mantle something anytime he stirs himself up that he can stir himself and carry a jawbone and it will be like a weapon in his hand it was just a bone but because of the spirit of the Lord that mantles him anytime he stirs himself emphasis on that word stir in fact the moment they were able to find a way to, to, to trap him through the deception that Delilah brought him into the first thing that the Bible said was that something got up and he shook himself as he does usually. It means anytime something wants to wield that power, he, begin, he begins to trouble himself. Certainly a kind of strength. This is what the Bible was making reference to. It says, in a certain season, an angel of the Lord will go and trouble the water. It will stir the water. It will shake the water. The water is the word. The word can be still. The word can be stable. The moment it is troubled, that's where, that's where the impact, that's where energy, that's where capacities are wielded from. You can hold the Bible in your hand and it doesn't feel like it's talking to you until an angel comes and troubles it. The word angel means messenger. Anytime you are seated at a place where the word of God is being opened, if you are wise, you'll be waiting for which scripture will be stirred today. The moment anything is troubled, you can enter it. If it is not troubled, it means there are unusual understanding you can come into at the course of the communication that you can come into a personalized knowledge of a particular scripture. It is at that time you can dive into it. Did you now understand that condition that anybody that can enter first, it means it's not everybody that is hearing the same thing. There are people whose ear, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. This particular ear they describe as an ear, it is that person that is able to gather his focus into the presence. What it means is that although you have two ears, there is a possibility that there are other opinions, other voices, other suggestions brewing in your heart, even in God's presence. But anybody that can shut that other gate and focus only on receiving the verdict of God, this is what it means by he that has an ear. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, it says, If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. However, you have two eyes. Is the Bible saying you should be closing one eye? He's saying these two eyes you have is, is communicative of the fact that you have capacity to focus on different things. But if you can cast your gaze only on the word, only on he, only on God, only on the revealed dimensions of God, he says your whole body shall be full of light. So it's about focus. It's a game of focus. It's a warfare of focus. No, if, if, I, if I take, 
if I take some, some stock here now, the number of people whose 100% attention is in this hall, there will not be more than one or two. You don't know how many parts, how many channels, how many percentage of your heart is always wandering in thoughts. Many of you, it's as I said this thing now that you just came here. You are in class, but you are not with the lecturer. You are in church, you are not with the preacher. This is how one day you will be with your wife, you are not with her. Always absent-minded. And everywhere, everywhere you are at the moment, what they do is that they make sure that you are not present. So you are always wandering away. I am trying to build something around the deliverer, Samson. The consecration about his birth was kept. And so finally, a mighty weapon of God had found expression into time. Although Samson has entered time, from time to time we began to see that the Spirit of God will move him and he will begin to judge the Philistines, begin to, 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 to afflict them in the measure that they have made Israel go through all these years. But it came to pass that the Philistines understood the art of war. Many military men have camped against Samson and he has slain them in their numbers. So they found out brute strength will not be the way to prevail over him. So they began to inquire, what are the areas of his obsession? What are the things that he loves? It will interest you to know that at various occasions, Samson will go into the land of the Philistines, the enemy's land, and go and spend a night in a prostitute's house and get up in the morning and remove the gate of their city and put on his shoulder. Do you understand what Samson did? Is that they had, they had a, a gossip that Samson is inside the land of the Philistines, that he is lodged in one prostitute's house. They now quickly went and locked the gate of the city, that if we lock the gate, we will see where he will follow. So what we will do is that in the morning, we will now catch him and we will deal with him. He woke up early morning and went to the gate that was locked. Do you know what a city looked like? And removed the gate of the city and put on his shoulder and carried it and kept on a rock. Where did he stand up from before he carried that gate? Are you, you, you pretend like you don't know. <laughs> the bed of fornication. Got up from fornication and carried the gate of a city. I need you to sometimes cast your eyes to, to anything that show you how kingdoms were built in those days. When they built gates of cities, they calculate war into that design. They calculate capacity to withstand stress capacity to withstand attack. So imagine one man collided with a gate, removed it, and carried it along. But he got up from the bed of fornication. It means there's something about the ordination of a deliverer that when he begins to walk in his days of manifestation, if he begins to wander out of the path of consecration, his horn will not leave him. He can be in compromise and still be wielding strength. He can be in iniquity and still be operating in power. He can be operating that gift even in, the, in, in that corrupt lifestyle. Because from the studios of eternity where he was fashioned from, from the place where they wired his unique, his unique capacities into him, they did, not, they did not tie it to a covenant that uh, if, if only he is righteous. The only consecration that keeps something was the hair. And it means that as long as the hair is not caught. Other areas of violations cannot break that covenant. The covenant is, let no blade come upon this. Did you, what I'm trying to say, in case somebody is not listening to me, is that what Satan will do is that he will allow you venture into certain layers of compromise. Then it will look like there is no repercussion for sin. It will look like every day is for the thief. It will look like God is slow. There is no judgment. You will now get used to that lifestyle of compromise. But the real attack is a covenant. Now I have wondered for many years, why will I be dating a person that is asking me for, my, for the secret, for, for, for how they can kill me? Why will somebody be crying? And when I ask you, why are you crying, love? You now say, you don't want to tell me how we can kill you. 
how can I, I, I cannot I cannot understand that situation then you will now so stress me out that I will now be so wearied I now tell you how, how to destroy me that is what you are looking for put, put yourself in something shoe maybe just try and see how did love shock you to that extent I don't care whether they were rubbing your head. <laughs> the question is, how, how, how can we tame you? And you use your mouth and you were explaining it in details. Now see, the first day, I, I used, just so that the case you will not stress me, I now told you that if you can tie me with fresh leaves cut from palm, I will be weak. When I now open my eyes, the next morning I saw fresh leaves on my hand and my leg is that not enough sign enough sign that some, something is happening here then as I now cut the rope you my love now got very angry I started crying again that you lied to me <laughs> what, what is happening here let's, let's pause first I have strong reasons to believe if something was a Nigerian that relationship will end in <laughs> Did you know why, listen, look at me. Did you know why he continued in that relationship and continued divulging secrets? It's because he had journeyed in compromise so long that he thought that the covenant cannot be broken based on how he can go and lie with a prostitute and get up and stare himself. The you see, this is how you can just stay by yourself, by yourself and yield to temptation. Fall for the sin of masturbation. Watch pornography and choke your heart with filthiness. Then you will now say tomorrow you fast. You know what you are doing? That fasting is you are staring yourself. You stare yourself with fasting. By 3 p.m. your spirit is charged. You now start walking like a colossus again. If any man be in Christ is a new creature. When you are done with that, Satan wants you to be enjoying the the, the crisscrossing you are doing between darkness and light. So you, you go for your vacation in darkness, you come back into light. You wander into darkness, you come back into light. One of these days, you will not come back. You will not come back. My emphasis this evening is Judges chapter 16. There is an opening there that made a lot of sense. The Bible says, and Samson loved a woman in the valley of Sorek. He came into a place where he now, he now became affectionate to a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name is what? See, listen. You know, there are many names in the Bible that because of one person's behavior, everybody ran from the name. Before Judas, that name was a popular. It, <laughs> maybe, maybe you should go and check the meaning of Judas and, and, and see. It's a, it's a good thing. Did you know the last time you saw anybody bearing Judas? Eh? You don't need to add his carrier, just <laughs> Judas. Okay, let's, let's come into Nigeria. I don't want to call some, some names. Meanwhile, do you know that people bear Gabriel, people bear Michael, you know, have you heard Lucifer? Eh? You know why? Although Lucifer is the form that is unfolding, it, it was the accurate angel. But because Satan once occupied that office, they, they, I, don't, I don't want anything. <laughs> people don't want anything that can link them in any way to any negative feeling. So just imagine something. They say somebody is a secret enemy in this, our church here, that there's somebody that is a betrayer in this, our midst, but we don't know who the person is. Then we're not asking everybody their name. Then somebody got up somewhere there and said his name is Lucifer. Do you know that subconsciously your suspicion would, your heart would just say, let's be careful with this. <laughs> 
I'm doing all of this on a lighter note. He says, and Samson loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The moment Samson, being a deliverer, fortified with strength, the moment his affection cleaved to something, the Philistines knew that they have gotten what they were looking for. They did not come to Samson, they went to Delilah. The same way Satan never went to Adam, he went to Eve. He waits until you have loved something. It is that thing that becomes the area. Lost thing, I'm talking about how has the mighty fallen. Every time a mighty fall, check the narrative. You will see that it was his obsession that they brought him down with. Check the narrative. You will see that it was her affection that they used to trace the areas where they could pull her down from. Now, Samson had lived fulfilling the mandate of what the ordination that was what God spake concerning him. He was fulfilling it. He was a judge in Israel. However, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. If there was any crime of Samson, it was loving a woman in the valley of Sorek. Now look at what his, his father began to tell him. That is there no woman in the whole of the land of Israel for you? Why did you go into this Gentile? That is where he likes The same way an angel came and announced the birth of Samson. And when they told Manoah that your wife will conceive. These are the consecrations she must keep. She must not take any strong drink and no blade must come upon the head of this boy. When they gave birth to this boy, prophecy confirmed. Ordination has begun to work. But the enemies knew that it was not enough that you have arrived. Look at how such a bright destiny was cut off. This is the same way many of us, we emerge, we arrive, we enter time as the intervention. Every time a people cry, every time a land groans in pain, the response of God is to send deliverers. There is a great campaign in our generation to mix up people's ordination so that they don't even remember their identity until their days are spent. Acts chapter 7 verse 35. Acts chapter 7, verse 35. One, two, go. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who had made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Please, maybe you read it by yourself one more time. One, two, go. Very quickly, Judges chapter 3, verse 9. Judges chapter 3, verse 9. Judges chapter 3, verse 9. Please, let's be very quick. Let's be very quick. The Bible says in Judges chapter 3, verse 9, let's read together. One, two, go. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel. Who delivered them? Even Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. When they cried, God raised the deliverer. Very quickly, Judges chapter 3, verse 15. Judges chapter 3, verse 15. Let's read together. One, two, go. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer. Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a man left-handed, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. The Lord raised a deliverer. The people cried. The Lord raised a deliverer. The people are in anguish. The Lord raised Gideon. There is always this consistent pattern. You must not be born with that prophecy. Sometimes you are just living your life normal, like Gideon, facing his business, and an angel will intercept the program of your life and heap another narrative 
unto what they have put upon you to do. Certainly, you who have lived your whole life in inferiority complex, lived your whole life in defeat, an angel comes with a strange salutation. He says, thou mighty man of valor. It does not sound like you. The moment they call you that, you have become it. They are describing the purpose you are about to embark on. And so they are, they are giving you capacity to wield the powers that can bring you into conformity with that prophecy. However, many of us, the moment we arrive time, and prophecies have gone ahead of many of us. Some of you, it is too clear that you are the last hope of your bloodline. Everybody continues to tell you the way prophecies went ahead, the confirmations, what God showed your mother, what God said to your father concerning who you will be. But now, the passage of time is making it very clear that manifestation is far from us. And even those among us who have manifested and began to command deliverance for those that we are sent into time to bring succor to. The Philistines camping around our destiny, they are beginning to master us. They are beginning to know the areas of our proclivities, the areas of our weaknesses. So it is not just enough to manifest. Can you manifest in your full potential? So the Philistines finally wearied Samson through Delilah, whom he loved. And the day he became vulnerable enough to disclose the secret of the covenant that keeps his strength, the Philistines prevailed over him by using Delilah to shave his hair. The moment his hair was shaved in Judges chapter 16, she woke him up in the morning because they will always test whether the anointing is still on your head. They are always testing. They can't, they, can't, they can't collide against you when the oil of God still flows upon your head. So what they are doing is they are checking, has the oil dried? Has it dried? After, after that fall from masturbation, they will come and check, is it, is it dried? <laughs> you know what that is it dried is? You will, just, you will just go in your bed like this. Suddenly you will just feel like something is... It's, it's, it's pressing you, something is pressing you. You wanted to say, G, 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 you struggle small. Then when you, when you shake the tin off, you now start blasting in tongue. Then they now see your garment spiritually is mounting you again. Say, Kai, the oil is still there. <laughs> what they are looking for is the day where the hand of God will lift from your head. Where you become Ichabod. The glory has departed. Is that day their real plan? You don't know the number of Philistines hiding behind the fence. They cannot enter the house yet. They just need Delilah to give them a sign that, oh, Tilo. What is that Delilah in your life that has been set in your life to sap the grace out of your life, to take the horn of God, to take the written code of your ordination? I'm not talking about Delilah like just, you know, a case of sexual immorality. Anything programmed into your life to create occasion for compromise and to deflate your standing in God is a Delilah. And on that certain day, as usual, Delilah said, the Philistines be upon you, Samson. And he got up, stared himself as usual. And the Bible says, he knew not that the Lord has left him. One of these days you will get up in the night again and want to say, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. I plead the blood of Jesus over. Da, 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 da. In the name of Jesus, I challenge. You don't know he has left you. It is in that day your sharp, sharp repentance will not work again. It is in that day thrones will rise. Princes that have hidden themselves behind appetites princes that are hid behind masturbation they will come out and show you their, their identity. It is in that day the name of Jesus will not be strong in your mouth because you have lost something. You have lost something. There is a stand you have in God kept by a covenant. If you journey in willful sin for long you will forsake your mercy. When you forsake your mercy not even God can help you. The place that princes fix the battle is in that particular arena where you have forsaken your mercy. They know that if they combat you, even in sin, the mercy of God can still defend you. 
So they need you to continue to walk in constant rebellion until you journey out of the provision of grace. Where your conscience becomes smeared. Nothing pricks your heart again when you sin. Where you begin to plan sin for tomorrow. You begin to stay in today. Tomorrow that you have not seen, you have factored sin into it. You have planned traveling to go and spend the weekend with some that 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 this time now your heart is perpetually creating avenues for iniquity. When you have reached that place, you have ventured into a reprobate mind. That is where the battle between princes are set because they don't want God to intervene when they collide with you. They want the presence to have lifted from your life. So the same man who slept with a prostitute got up and took the gate of a city and put upon his shoulder. That same man woke up one day and shook himself. And for the first time, he could not lose the fetters. Then she signaled them that you can now come. When the Philistines came and took something, look at me everybody, follow me. The first thing they did, they removed his eyes. I'm showing you the progression of the attack that will be measured into the season of a deliverer. A day will come by the time you forsake the assignment, by the time you are falling out of favor. You will be in the center of the type of situation they sent you into time to deliver. You will be in that family where you were sent to command deliverance for them and your ears will hear their cry and their cry will not break your heart again. You will see, you who are sent to become the bread of the poor, you will see poor people, you will see the needy, even with money in your account, your heart cannot feel their pain anymore because you have lost your vision. They have taken your eyes away. You don't have capacity to answer the call of he that sent you anymore. You who were sent to bond all kinds of fractured marriages that anywhere Satan try to create and plant seed of discord, it will be through God's deposit in your life that he, will, he would merge that home together. Now, when you hear people angrily quarreling, you just mind your business and say it's not, you have lost, they've removed your eyes. Their first intention when they have access to you is to remove your eyes. Did it, did it not surprise you that after the different attacks, after the impact of Samson's vengeance on these guys, that when they caught him, they did not kill him. They immediately removed his eyes. Their intent was to make Samson a mockery, to make him lose the capacity to see. This is how many deliverers are in time but they have lost their vision. They have lost their vision. They can no longer respond to the plight of the people they were sent to deliver. So their mission has been aborted. Now they are alive, but they are only counting time. They can't respond to the clarion call for intervention anymore. They can't even intervene. They can't pray. When the burden of the afflicted comes upon them, they can't, they can't wait on God, they can't fast, they can't pray. They only live for themselves because they have lost the vision. Are you here? And your eyes have been plucked out by this wicked scheme of darkness that the way God used to put burdens in your heart before, you don't have capacity to relate with the burdens of God anymore. Now, you just live for pleasures. The constant meditation of your heart is me, myself, and I. You have lost your eyes. You have lost your vision. You cannot actually relate with the plight of the people you were sent to, send, to save anymore. But when the people cried, when that old woman cried, when that family, when they travailed in pain, God sent a deliverer. Look at what has become of the deliverer. 
he has become a creature of pleasure. He was bounded by pleasure. What killed Samson? Pleasure. Pleasure. It would have been better. It would have been better that he was beheaded in a, in a battlefield. But he died for pleasure. Pleasure. This is where deliverers die. They die on the field of pleasure. Would masturbation stop Jesus from using you? Will fornication stop Jesus from burning brightly through you? What is standing as a stumbling block from God running through you like a vessel? Because as long as there is corruption in your vessel, you cannot be a vessel unto honor. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20, he says, in a great house, there are many vessels. When you think about vessel, don't just think about plates. Think about any kind of container. Think about any type of vessel. Think about pipes. How can God channel the pure waters, the living waters? How can God channel the holy waters through you? How can men hear the, the, the hallowed oracles of God if the pipe is contaminated, rotting? That anything that passes through you will be corrupted before it comes out. So from Zion, where it's beaming from, is pure. But because of the vessel, it was flowing through. Contamination entered it. Many deliver us. Blinded. They have been locked up in dungeons of Philistines. And what they do now is that any day the Lord of the Philistines, any day they want to entertain themselves, they say, go and bring us something. So they bring him out so that they will now keep him in the center of Jesus Christ. A man, a man that Gabriel came into time to announce his birth. Come on now. A man that a prince among the civilizations of Zion came to speak about his consecration. He has become a laughing stock for Philistines. That they kept him with blinded eye. Then they would, they would touch him and say, who, who taught you something? Then they are in their drunken state, they are laughing. It's now an entertainment. Hi! How did Satan make sure that the plan was not to kill you? But they want you to fall so much that you will be living in a gutter. You will get up from fornication, fall into masturbation, from masturbation, and different layers of corruption. But the person that they are looking at is a prince in Zion. Because your form, they still know that in the day of his prophecy, he was a mighty and valiant weapon in the hand of God. So anytime they look at you, there is a feeling of joy that enters their heart. They say, see how we stopped God. See how we stop the agenda of God. Because when they look at you, you are a prophecy that failed. This was, this is, that is in, in your life, in your life, it is like Armageddon. This is where light and darkness collided and darkness prevailed. So they leave you as, as a message of entertainment to themselves. Any day they want to be happy, they will say, bring something out. Now you have been chained, bounded hand and foot. That demons can ring bells. They can, they can click, they can click bells. And suddenly your vessel is not in your control. Like a zombie, you get up and you begin to carry the instructions of strange spirits. Meanwhile, you are a prince. He says in the day where Israel was marginalized, he says there was no sword in Israel. He says the highways were unoccupied and men began to journey through byways. He says, I, Deborah, arose. I arose a mother in Israel. See, in that day, like I said, God will send a deliverer. It is not about what was described as regarding your life. There are other matters you can carry in the process of time. Because the person who was given that role abandoned his post. You can say, Lord, I'm available. As long as your eye can see a challenge, you can be the intervention. As long as you can say, Lord, things ought not to be so. The moment your heart can relate with the injustice, you can be the solution. Because too many deliverers have been defeated.
You know how many Philistines have been encamping around my life for many years? Eh? Looking for a loophole. So that they can, they can bring me to a place where a lamentation will break out. How has the mighty fallen? A great weapon of war perish. He says, tell it not in God. Let it not be heard on the streets of Askelon. Lest the daughter of the Philistines rejoice and the uncircumcised exult. How has the mighty fallen? Who are these mighty ones? The Bible says God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. The mighty are the ones sent into time with hallowed ordination. Something in you is telling you, you are not normal. You are not like the rest of them. You are their savior. You are their deliverer. You are the intervention sent into the family. Something continues to echo. Something holds you to a high level of consecration. Other people are just so comfortable in sin. You, if you, if you break one law, your peace leaves you like you are suicidal. There is something about you that holds you to a higher level of consecration. How were mighty weapons detained? Now warriors who ought to valiantly plant the flag of Jesus on different landscape, they have become victims. Victims. Now the number of captains in the army of God who have chains in their hand, you will weep when you see them. The number of princes in light who are currently captives of darkness, you will weep when you see them. The Boras, all of them were identified. Before you can even say death, they found them out. They saw the ordination upon their head and they came for the generation very quickly. Began to choke their heart with iniquity. So that before the season of manifestation comes, there's already so much impurity in the heart. Where would you start from? Even if you say, I will not expose myself to sin again, there is already a sediment of iniquity piled on your soul. How would you continue? Like Samson, many have lost their eyes. Many, their hair has been shaved. And now the Philistines are laughing. You are now an entertainment, a ridicule. But Samson's life did not end there. Because that hair that they shaved, that hair grew again. What the Philistines did not know is that the particular source of that covenant is that let nothing cut the hair. But they did not tell you whether the hair will not grow. The Bible says there is hope for a tree. Although it be cut short, at the scent of water. The water tonight is the word of God. As these things are entering your soul, this is how the fetters, the chains are falling off. This is how somebody is coming into a superior knowledge of his identity. This is how somebody is knowing, I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave. I'm not a victim. I'm a warrior. I'm a captain. I'm a leader among men. I am not small. I'm a prince in my generation. This is how a realization comes into you. Then suddenly, like the prodigal son, you say, but in my father's house, you know, you know that I am not supposed to live like this. The devil will keep you in a mirage for long. Make you believe, make you believe that this is how life should be for you. But there is a day where a spiritual consciousness will come. It is that day deliverance starts. It's the day where you enter the realization of the truth. I'm not helpless. I'm not sick. I carry the healing anointing. I can communicate healing to nations. My life did not end as a prisoner. The, mom, the moment these things begin to enter your heart, you know that deliverance, deliverance is here. I'm speaking to all the Samson in our midst today. I'm speaking to everybody that have come under an intense season of attack. People that darkness has concluded that if it is in this life, we have win, we have prevailed. We have gotten the last of him. I'm speaking to those who know that they are more than all that they have lived out to be. I'm speaking to Deborahs. I'm speaking to everybody who must emerge now. Because the season of your appearing has come. I'm speaking to everybody who must raise an alarm so that the generation can align to them. I'm talking to anybody in this place who is tired of captivity. Anybody in this place who knows that if only I can be consistent with the altars of consecration, if only I can walk without compromise, I will touch substance in God. I'm talking to people who can hear the cry 
of people they were sent to deliver and they don't have any way to help them all along. I'm talking to anybody in this place who have been asking God, Lord, help me, help me, help me so that I can command deliverance for this family. It is time to throw the chains off your neck. It is time to cast the fetters from your hands. It's time to submit yourself to another protocol. Deliverance will be a process for you because the spirit will begin to occasion different dealings that will help your soul to be rid of the corruption that has piled on it. For some of you, the spirit will lead you into a protracted season of fasting. For some of you, he will lead you into a voracious season of the world. You will just be on the world, on the world. What you are going through is treatment. It's like drip. They are they are infusing new liquid into your body because there is so much contamination. They are trying to make sure there is purification. This is what the dealings of God will do for you. It is not just enough to receive a message and then have an emotional reaction and jump up. There will be a, a, a season that will be initiated to cleanse you of the corruption that has piled on your soul over years. And so this is exactly the season where Jesus will say to Judas, do that which you must do quickly. If you are a deliverer, be a deliverer quickly because there is no more time. For some of you, the people you were sent to help, some of them are already dying and nobody helped them till they died. Meanwhile, heaven will hold you accountable. Heaven will make sure you must give account. I will show you some things about those who have ordinations upon their life and maybe it will make some sense to you. I will show you the accountability that is awaiting every one of us that God has ordained that will command deliverance for our generation in one way or another. In Ezekiel chapter 3 from verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 3 from verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Next verse. When I say unto the wicked, in other words, if I tell you to tell the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not the warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require in your hand. So if a watchman whose work is only to announce what he heard and what he saw, he did not announce, he did not carry out the duty of the watchman, they held him accountable for the blood of those who died. Imagine what awaits a deliverer lodged with capacities. And many died under your watch. Many wasted under your watch. Many were consumed under your watch. You who was decked with celestial powers because of pleasure. This is where princes die. They die on the bed of pleasure. Because of pleasure, you refuse to be transfigured into your true form. So you could not grow. Because of pleasure, you remain infantile forever. And they continue to say, where is the deliverer? Today, I bring the same exaltation of John the Baptist. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we wait for another? Should your life count for nothing? Should we abandon that you are on, 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 on ground and just be waiting for the next prophecy God will send? How comes you have settled for pleasure so much? How comes you have retired into vanity and vainness so much? That your ordination is no longer an emphasis. Give me that scripture. Let me show them something. The next verse. Yet, if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So in case you don't know, the moment an ordination is wheeled into you as a watchman, a savior, or a deliverer is about the destination of your soul. If the blood is required on your hand, he says you can save your soul if you do due diligence to carry out your watchman duties. Next verse. Again, again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I, God, lay a stumbling block before him 
So God says, if a righteous man backslide and now begin to walk in sin, I will still come and meet you, a watchman, to sound a warning to him. But it is the same me that will set a stumbling block ahead of him because I am fair. I am just. The foundation of my throne is righteousness and justice. So I would set a stumbling block. But me that set the stumbling block will come and whisper to you, a watchman, to go and warn the righteous man who has fallen into sin not to continue on this path because there is a stumbling block waiting to destroy him that have been set by the justice system of God. But that same justice system will have another side called mercy that will speak through a watchman. He said, go and warn him. He says, and, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because, let's go back. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he had done shall not be remembered but his blood will I require at thy hand it's not business as usual it's not business as usual in fact the worst pain the worst pain in this place now is not that you saw something and you did not create enough room for intercessory labor is that you, you are not even seeing anything again. You have lost capacity to see. So different things happen in the family and your sight did not pick it. You did not pick it. How many blood will be required in your hand? Oh, watchman. Oh, watchman. Save us and deliver us. Imagine what will await Moses if he abandoned this ordination and told God, let me be. Please, I don't have time for this of a head work. Imagine the thousands of people whose life has been compromised because of one man's selfishness. You don't know what it takes to be a deliverer, what it takes to be a savior, what it takes to be a watchman. It means the destiny of a people is in your hand. You know the funny thing? Even as I'm speaking to you now, there are many people, all they can see is only themselves. Their life cannot be beyond themselves. They don't think that they are responsible for anybody. They don't think that God holds them accountable for anybody. They don't think that anybody needs their prayers, duties. They don't think that they need to labor to touch God for the sake of anybody. It's me, myself, and I. Tonight, the hair of Samson will grow again. And maybe, just maybe, the sight and the vision of a couple of people will be restored. You are going to cry like blind Bartimaeus, son of David. Have mercy. If it is about blindness, you will not ask for sight. You will beg for mercy. Because the way your sight was lost, there were legalities involved. So you will cry for mercy. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. I don't want to believe all the years has been a waste. I don't want to believe the past 20, the past 30 years has been a waste. My sight, my sight, my sight. My sight! Let your body come upon me again. 
those days, those days when he can cast a burden upon your heart and food will lose taste. Hi! What happened to those capacities? those days when he spreads his cat upon you you know you are dying you know you are dying by how self-centered you are becoming you know you are dying by how self-centered you are becoming everything becomes for pleasure everything becomes for self gratification you have lost your vision you have lost your vision and like blind Bartimaeus you will need to cry for mercy show mercy thou son of David Tonight, I'm speaking to every warrior. I'm speaking to every prince. I'm speaking to every mighty who are falling, who are falling. Awake! Awake! Can you not hear their cry? Can you not hear their groaning? Can you not hear the cry? They cry because no deliverer emerged. How has the mighty fallen? See how weak, see how weak you have become. You who used to stay on the altar of prayer for hours before, see how weak you have become. You whose eyes used to catch glimpses, you who used to see, see how blind you have become. They cried unto the Lord and he sent them a deliverer. Are you the one sent by God? Are you the intervention of God?
Listen. Listen. Please give me your attention wherever you are. Please hear the wordings of this hymn. Just give me your attention wherever you are. It says, fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their light in the glorious sun. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling. Only remembered by what we have done. Only the truth that in life we have spoken. Only the seed that on earth we have sown. This shall pass onward when we are forgotten. Fruits of the harvest and what we have done. Only remembered by what we have done. Only remembered by what we have done. You need to answer the clarion call. You need to live for a cause other than yourself. It needs to become stronger than personal ambition. There must be something you are trying to die for. There must be something that is consuming you. You are willing to lay down your life any day, any time. Only remembered by what we have done. Many of us have been distracted. We got so distracted along the way. It became so blurry at some point. It was about pursuing different goals, different ambition. And the purpose of God has been relegated. You are not too young. By now, Jesus should have a harvest from your life. You are matured enough to produce fruit. If they take you on the scale, it must be mercy that will say, give him one more year. When it's all been said and done Only just one thing will matter Did I do my best to live for truth Did I live my life for you when it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for God's reward Will stand the test of time Listen, I leave you with a question tonight. If your life ends here, what have you done for God? What have you done for God? Ask yourself this question. If your life ends here, what, what, what is your token of appreciation that see what I did with the life you gave me? What would you take back to him and say, this is what I bring at your feet? If the chapter is closed now, what record do they have about you? What victory did your life wrought? What battle did you fight for righteousness? Is there any field where your, 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 your blood dropped? Where, where they can now capture and say, this was where he fought, this was where he died. Or it was on the bed of pleasure you died. Like something, mighty princes reduced to nothing. A man reduced to a piece of bread. Then the Philistines laugh and mock you till you die. Fornication can look sweet to you now. 
It can look like you are having fun. Like there is pleasure. That is where princes die. It's called Kadesh Beni. The place where princes die. It is where grace is lifted from their head. You keep pampering that sin. It is destroying the ordination carefully. Gradually. It's destroying it. Can't you, can't you read the handwriting on the wall? You who used to open the Bible and see light and revelation before. Can't you see how dry it's looking now? You are dying, brother. You are dying. Sister, you are dying. Don't wait until you are cut off. Allow water. Allow the water of the word. Allow it to rekindle you. You who used to lay on the altar of prayer and hours will go and you are still kept by the body of the Lord. Now you cannot go for 30 minutes. You are dying. You are dying gradually. Death is setting in. Don't wait until you are hopeless. Run to the river of life. Go and drink quickly so that you can be revived. And then live for a cause greater than you. What is life in the first place? It's a handful of bread. You know why I'm doing what I'm doing? I'm investing into the the age to come. There is an age that is coming. The souls that Jesus will keep to my name is not any of you. All of you came because a horn was blown. All of you came because Zion echoed an alarm. But the people I am able to interact with, those I am able to disciple, those I am able to give my time to and ensure that they walk in righteousness, these are my own souls. So everybody must labor. Everybody must labor. Those I am able to identify them on their express way to damnation. And I gave them my attention. And I began to follow them up until they are stable in light. And I cast my attention to another person. These are my own souls. These are my souls. I will not go and meet my Savior empty-handed. I will not go empty-handed. You remember? You remember the wicked and unfaithful servant? He returned exactly as he came. He said, I did not gain anything extra. Guess what they called him? You wicked and unfaithful servant. Prince! You now died and returned still as a prince. Then they look at you and say, but what did you do with this hallowed power? You went and lived like flesh and blood. Died in pleasure. Then return back with the ordination and say, take your one talent. Take your five talents. How did you multiply it? No. But I brought it back exactly as you gave me. Wicked and unfaithful servant. You did not serve humanity with the gift. You, nobody was lifted. It was all about yourself. Wicked and unfaithful servant. Don't let, don't bury, don't bury your talent under the earth. It's, I, I will tell you tonight how talents are buried. It is the dust of the earth that buries talent. And the dust is the flesh. God formed man from the dust of the ground. That dust is the nature of the flesh. It has capacity to bury the talent God has put inside you. So the flesh can dominate you. You can start living from a fleshy place. All of your craving is sensual desires. And at the end of the day, you never, you never answered the call of he that sent you. Some of the things that keep me awake, I know that I'm going to the same heaven that Smith Wigglesworth went to. The same heaven that John G. Lake went to. The same heaven that Catherine Kuhlman went to. The same heaven that Amy Semple McPherson went to. The same heaven Apostle Paul went to. They will keep us in the same area. So if they call them Christians, they will now call me a Christian. Men who have bared sacrifice. You who lived for self selfishness throughout. Which reward is waiting for you? What have you done for the Lord? Not one soul. Not one soul. The whole of 2023, no single soul, no single one. You have started it like that again, 2024. Living, why should you not die? He says, I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. So the reason for life is so that I can advance kingdom. But you are not advancing kingdom, yet he's giving you life. Because he's saying, give it one more year. One more year. The father comes and says, 
cut it down. It's not fruitful. He says, the vine dresser says, give it one more year. You know who the vine dresser is? It's Jesus, our high priest that ever liveth to make intercession for us. He is begging. He is begging on your behalf. He said, let, let her not die yet. Maybe, maybe she will become fruitful next year. Give her one more year. Give him one more year. Naya, maybe he will begin to hearken to the body of Zion. Not even your neighbors. Not even your neighbors can come to light. You are not winning anybody to God, yet you are leading many into darkness. Your actions, your words is leading many into damnation. How did you intend to cross into eternity? I'm asking somebody again. How did you intend to go there? You, you really think you will just open your eye and angels are waiting to... Who, who is waiting to receive you? What have you done for the Lord? You lived your whole life a self-centered person. Never remembered Jesus. Never thought about his, his will. Everything was you. But he gave his life for you. It was because of you he couldn't live long. He, he, his life was caught in the prime. In the prime of his existence. That was where he laid so that he can continue living through your own life. But you shot him out. You shot him out. He stood at the door and knocked for long. You refused to open the door. You were doing your own thing. Enjoying your own pleasure. But he thought that how to be a fair again. The day he took his last breath. The day we were the ones crucifying him. And he was begging the father. He was begging the father to forgive us. Because we didn't know what we were doing. Because he was hoping that he will exchange his life for ours. And then he can live through us. But now Jesus is not welcome in your life. All other spirits are using you. All other spirits are using you. Demons are finding free course on your life. And the one who traded himself for you. The one who paid the price for redemption for your soul. He has not gotten any day where he rode through you. He rode through you. Why are you not bothered? Why are you not bothered that you are not fruitful? Why does it not, why does it not break your heart that you are not bearing fruit? A tree wasting the resources of Zion. You are watered every day. They are giving you water. They are combing the ground around you. Wicked spirits, demons are projecting attack. Day and night, they are resisting the hand of wickedness. Keeping you alive. Spending kingdom resource to make sure you are not consumed. And your life cannot give God glory. We are now so used to coming to church. We gather together, excite ourselves and go back home. Church will not save you. Church will not save you. Church will not save you. God commands a harvest. He deserves his harvest. And if you are not fruitful, you are wicked. You are wicked. You are wicked. You say there is, there is a great chain, a chain of masturbation. It's pleasure, it's pleasure, it's pleasure. It is pleasure that you are surrendering yourself to. Would any spirit, will any spirit carry your hand and force it to type pornographic sites? Will any spirit browse with your phone? Is it not your hand that cooperated? It's pleasure you yielded yourself to. Because you only love yourself. You don't love the Lord. If you don't love the Lord, you are anathema maranatha. It means you have been measured and kept for judgment. You are anathema maranatha if you don't love the Lord. How do you know you love the Lord? If you love him, you will keep his commandments. If you cannot keep his commandments, you are anathema maranatha. You don't love him. They have reserved you for judgment. They are just letting you wait for judgment now. Any day from now, judgment can come. 
because you don't love the Lord your life does not in any way advance the kingdom of the Lord you are living for wickedness a corrupt and perverse generation how many years are you how many years are you yet a mango tree that is only three years you are already putting pressure on it and say it's supposed to be fruitful you you are more than 20 years and there is no one soul not one wicked and unfaithful servants wicked wickedness you have locked Jesus out he cannot walk through your life he has no place through you everything is for yourself meanwhile before he left he says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creation preach the gospel preach the gospel there are some of us in this place you have tasted the glory of God before. You have handled his hallowed presence. But now you are Ichabod. The glory has departed. You will cry for mercy. You will cry for mercy. You will cry for mercy. I would waste upon your altar. I would waste following you. At the end, that's all the world would say of me. In you, in life or in death, I am yours. I would waste upon your altar. I would waste following you At the end that's all the world would say of me There's so many things to follow But I leave following you In life or in death I am yours In life or in death Through the waters I would go If it leads me to you Through the fire I would go If the way leads to you there's no other life for me 
I'm committed to you. This is all there is for me. I'm addicted to you. Through the waters I would go if it leads me to you. Through the fire I would go. There's no other life for me. I'm committed to you. This is all there is for me. I'm addicted to you. I am Yahweh. How shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great a mercy? How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? Can you not read the writing on the wall? Life is not bread and butter. It's not to amass silver and gold. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandment. This is the whole reason for life. You want to make a decision for Jesus tonight? You want to wave goodbye to everything that has kept you bound? Everything that has undermined your convictions? Everything that has affected your commitment? To the great commission the great clarion call please come i want to pray with you come let's pray together you want to rededicate your life to jesus you want to reaffirm your vows come I come, Yahweh, I come To the altar of incense, I come I come, Yahweh, I come To the mountains of Zion, I come I come, Yahweh, I come To the altar of incense, I come I come, Yahweh, I come To the mountains of Zion, I come I beseech you therefore, brethren By the mercies of the Lord That you present your bodies as living sacrifice You present that sacrifice on an altar The altar of incense, you must be put on fire Harden not your heart Harden not your heart in the day where you hear his beckoning, harden not your heart. Brother, come. Sister, come. Come to him.
It's just you and the Holy Ghost now. He's hearing you. You can talk to him. You can talk to him. No man can come to the Father except the Father draws them near. These are the ones he has drawn near. He has drawn them near. He drew them to himself. He said, come, come, let's reason together. Come, my child, come, my child. Let's reason together. What kind of loving father is this? That we have abandoned his laws, walked in rebellion, and he says, come, let's reason together. Let's rob minds. Come. Come. Come, come, come. 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 He is listening to you. You can talk to him. Talk to him. His ears is close to you, your mouth. He can hear you. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. You are here. And you have been unfruitful for long. You have not bore fruits of souls. Come out now. Quickly. Come. Don't waste time. Come. 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 Just talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. You know who you are talking to? You are talking to our high priest. Whoever liveth to make intercession for us. You are talking to the only reason why you have not perished. He is the reason. He is the reason why you are still alive. He is the one that believes. He believes that if they give you more time, if they give you more time, that you will prevail. He is the one that is appealing to the Father. Give it one more year. One more year. It will be fruitful. One more year. It will be fruitful. Talk to him. Talk to him. He says, come, let's reason together. Come, let's reason together. Come unto me, all ye that labor. All those who are tired. He says, come. Are you depressed? Come. Is life meaningless? He says, come. Come. There is rest. There is rest in him. There is rest. Come. Please come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Please make a decision for him. Nobody will love you like him. Nobody. Nobody can love you like he does. Come to Jesus. Don't ignore him.
Lord, you will pray this prayer like Catherine Kuhlman. I am nothing. I am nothing. I have wasted time, wasted years. I am nothing. But if you can use nothing, please use me. If you need nothing, please take me. I have wasted my life. But if you can still do anything with what is left, please take it. Take it. Take it. Would you surrender to him tonight? Would you step out of the way? Would you let him take what is left? Would you let him take what is left of this life? This is the place where you exchange your life to. This is the place where you lay down your own life. This is the place where you take a decision once and for all for Jesus. Kodatunia <laughs> takini naso uzama kamarka. Ah, 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 Koda dunia takini Naso unzo makamarka Ah, 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 ah Koda dunia takini Naso unzo makamarka Ah, 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 Koda dunia takini na so unzama kamarka. Ah, 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 Koda dunia, Koda dunia takini na so unzama.
Please, ushers, help, help, help them, help them. Precious Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. Thank you for drawing us near. Thank you for drawing us near. Thank you for drawing us near. Thank you for leading us to the Father. Thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for drawing us to yourselves. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. See, Lord Jesus. I thank you for all the opportunities you have given me. Thank you for every time you have called my attention again. Thank you because you have not allowed me to journey into darkness. Thank you for every time you call my attention with your love. Today, I hear your voice and I follow you. Today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died on the cross and I died with you. That you were raised from the dead and I was raised with you. I am a child of God. I am born again. My life is not my own. I live for you. You can continue your life through me. You can live through me. You can heal through me. You can preach through me. You can raise the dead through me. Lord Jesus, continue your ministry through me. And let the nations of the earth be won unto you in the name of Jesus. Congratulations to everybody. You are now an ambassador of the kingdom. There is the spirit of God brooding in you now. He will define your appetite. He will define your interest. And above all, it will begin to influence your use of time. Sicknesses, diseases, all kinds of infirmities, they are taken away from your body now in the name of Jesus. 
all kinds of unwellness from pains to weaknesses to dizziness to organ issues every complication is taken away from your body and nailed to the cross in the name of Jesus Christ you are healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet every pain leaves you now touch any part of your body if you cannot touch the areas where you need your healing including those seated any anybody here who needs the touch of God I challenge infirmities sicknesses leave their bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. you are healed totally Amen. as you turn to go I need you to attempt to do the things you could not do before I need you to verify the places growths growths inside people's body has left pains around the abdomen waist pain bones fractures of bones Aye. dizziness deafness of the ears eye defects all kinds of organ failures blood related conditions all checked out by the name of Jesus you are healed and your healing is permanent please check yourself as you go to your seats God bless you and those of us sitting down listen listen just be checking yourself check yourself do what you could not do if you had pains begin to check those places that's what you should be doing now. Start, start checking everywhere there was a signature of infirmity before now. Abokane Kabani Nagode Iyali Kabani Nagode Please, I, I, want, I want the leaders to prepare the communion now quickly. Just quickly, get it set. Listen, listen. Hear, hear the word of the Lord. S start checking the things you could not do before. You will leave sicknesses behind. You will not go back with it to your house. It will not follow you back home. Those of you with migraines, start checking. Check. Fractures, check. Eye defects, check. Check your ears. Check anything where Satan has registered any issue around your life. Check quickly. We're going to seal this thing up with a communion. Sujada Neneke Sujada Sujada Godia Neneke Godia Godia Sujada Neneke Sujada Sujada Godia Neneke Godia Godia Can we lead can we lead people quickly? We're running out of time. See, listen, look at me. It's, it, is, it is illegal to not be fruitful. When you live here, be deliberate about being fruitful. You are partaking of the blood and of the body. Infirmities, sicknesses, diseases, all kinds of captivity, they check out. You are following us online. You can consecrate your own communion and take it now. Take it now. Welcome to the new life.
You have taken your communion. If you have taken your communion quickly, just one minute, one minute, say a word of prayer. Say a word of prayer. Say a word of prayer. Don't just sit down. Say a word of prayer. Remember, the world has gone ahead. February is rounding up. The, one, the month of March is the month of favor. So begin to declare, begin to command favor into your experience. Yes, don't be quiet. Don't be quiet over your destiny. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Is there has thou commanded thy morning? I speak to the month of March. I program breakthroughs. I program favor. I declare my path. My path is littered with favors. My going out and my coming in is full of favor.
Everybody outside, come inside, come inside, come inside. Hi. Tehapakata pakate paradesh. Shakata parako fehete kanemius. Fataka pande hefe kanos. Zeliaka parato kofenas. Shabara heveriaska. Just come inside. Come and sit on your seats. Sit on your seats. Where is that disease that won't obey the name? The chains of Egypt's jail ah. yeah. and not disobey the name. Where is that disease? That won't obey your name. He has given us a name that is above every other name. At the mention of the name Jesus, let every knee bow. Let every tongue confess. Your name is higher than the highest, bigger than the biggest. Your name, Jesus, your name. Your name is higher. Your name is higher than the highest. Jesus, your name. Jesus, your name. Your name, your name is Your name is higher than the highest, bigger than the biggest. Your name, Jesus, your name. Every knee must bow and every tongue confess. But Jesus Christ is Lord at the name of Every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Every Somebody shout Jesus! Should bow in every tongue confess hey, that Jesus Christ is Come somebody shout Jesus! Jesus! Every knee should bow in every tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord.
that name that name is commanding deliverance over people's lives right now is checking away every other name is checking away conditions checking away all kinds of medical reports is checking it out Jesus every knee will bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is All right. Listen. Check your bodies now. Check. You have been touched. If you have recorded your healing, raise your hand above your head quickly. Can we celebrate Jesus? <laughs> Can we celebrate Jesus? Listen, a day will come there will be no sick person in Kaduna State. Some people's head cannot conceive what I just said. Because they now imagine, they say, what about those in the hospital? A day will come. Eh? The, way, the way people have illness and think of hospital immediately, People will have a challenge and they will think of church first. They will, they will run to the presence of God. It is only in His presence that there is healing. There is no healing in hospitals. We salute the doctors for their effort. They can treat. They can manage. But only God can heal. We are envoys of His healing grace. Every one of us, we are envoys of his healing grace. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You see, I don't want us to walk ignorantly this year. I apologize for time. Let's take our offerings quickly. Just package an offering. Let's let let an usher pass quickly. Let's pray. Let's pray on the offerings. The word of the Lord has gone ahead of us. Now the month of March is the month of favor. Unusual favor. You know what you do? Contend with prophecy. Don't just shout amen to prophecy. Carry it and run with it. Hold it in prayer and, and press it until it enters your body. You and it became one. Lord, your favor over my life. Prophecy has gone ahead. You must use priesthood to drag it into your space. I must enjoy favor. The month of March is loaded with benefits. Benefits. In this month of March, everybody is supposed to walk into prepared blessings. If you don't, it is your fault. Prophecy has gone ahead. A virgin shall be with child. They did not say Mary. Prophecy went ahead. People start aligning themselves. People start contending for manifestation. Saviors shall arise. They didn't call any name. It's different people that say, Lord, here am I. Can I be the savior over this family? God say, you want to be? I say, yes. He will say, go. The prophecies over us have no name tag. Anybody who is brutal enough, you will enter. Deliver us. Every time people begin to cry. For example, Nigeria is groaning now. Every time a people cry, God sends a deliverer. I need somebody to be positioned in this season. I need somebody to make sure they are strategically positioned. 
We thank you, Father. We give you glory. We have brought substance to your house. We pray that you multiply our substance and fill our bands. Increase our capacities and cause the windows of heaven to open over our storehouses and make us to run into overflows so that we can advance your kingdom here on earth and we can serve you faithfully. Let your name be glorified forever. Be thou exalted. As we give, let it be pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to the following announcement very quickly. Very soon, Congress will start having overflows. Listen, listen, listen. It's not uh, uh, an announcement for clapping, huh? Now see what we want to do. Everybody who is a part of one department or another and all the heads of department we wait behind immediately after this service. I know it's late, but I will not take your time. Immediately after this service, wait behind. And arrange yourself quickly, just come to the front so that we can have a very brief meeting, a very quick meeting. I want to advise all the workers to make themselves available on Tuesday. Today we started a bit late because some of us strode into the meeting um, casually. It's not, it's not a good sign. Um, Solemn Assembly is here. So everybody who is going to be part of the mission team that will join in with us to Zaria, please make sure the names are well um, listed so that we can have proper budgeting. If we don't have the names of the respective members of your teams before the end of this week, just know that we, we, have, we have zeroed our heart that we don't have anybody from that team. I don't know why it's taking so long. So please, let's prepare ourselves. All of our brethren who are blessed and who are being blessed by the deposit of God upon our lives, around Zaria and its environs, please, all road leads to Blue Roof, ABU, Zaria. It's going to be such an explosive platform of intervention. Make out time and come because something will erupt in your spirit and it will burst open new fountains of life will find expression. These are the things God continues to lay in our heart concerning the conference. God's willing, after we are done with Zaria, we will be going to Imo State for Solemn Assembly. <laughs> so, to all of our brothers and our brethren in the East, Enugu, Abia, Imo, all of my people there, let's gather ourselves together. Jesus will be coming to your space and he will be sounding an alarm in very clear terms. Something heavy is coming something massive is invading your space. Please, I need us to coordinate our efforts together so that we can host a very elaborate conference that can shift situations and shift land, land, landscapes and alter the course of people's destinies for the glory of God. So please, let's coordinate ourselves together. Let's find a rallying point and let's begin to make preparations. Subsequent information will be made available um, as, of course, the days unfold. But we trust the Lord to be with you in the East for the revival contact called Solemn Assembly. Who is excited? I also want to appreciate every one of us for taking our time for fasting today. That is Tuesday for those who fasted. Let me repeat it again. I want to appreciate anyone who fasted. On Tuesday is our fasting. So those who are pretending like they don't know, now you know. Every Tuesday we fast. And before we fast, there's a fasting direction that is put on our social media platform early morning to give you a direction to focus your fasting through. If you follow just the things God has laid upon our hands, 
On Friday, we are here to contend for capacity. On Tuesday, we grind on the word. We provoke our spirit and trouble the waters until we, we touch some, some ordinance in God. Then on Sunday, we ascend the mountains of transfiguration. If these things are around your life on a normal day, there will, there will be no room for sin to accumulate because there are spiritual activities that should keep the fire burning. But if Satan finds a way to separate you from the horde, the next thing is you will die in isolation. Some of you, what you do is that you will separate yourself, die, 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 die. Then you will run with your last strength and enter again. Take small life. Then you go back and start dying again. Why, why must you die? I want to celebrate my covenant brother, an erudite minister of the gospel, a man highly graced and favored of God. Apostle Shedrach is in the house. Please celebrate him. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Such an honor to have you. Thank you, sir. I want to welcome all the ministers of the gospel here present. It is such a privilege to share fellowship with you. And my honor and my appreciation goes to you. Thank you so much. We are grateful. God bless you. I celebrate every one of you. Go to your week and prosper. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. You know the fruitfulness I'm talking about? I didn't say multiply. <laughs> Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Jesus must get a harvest from this life. Jesus must get a harvest from my life. Vow! Don't, don't allow Satan deceive you to hide you in the, in the crowd. So that you say, we, we are doing some kingdom labor. It's not we, it's I. I. When it's time to clean the chest, it's I cleaned. Clean it as unto, as though you are the only one that, that has that response. Clean it with all your power. <laughs> Everything else can wait. Give me you. Hope. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, give me you. 